The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis, from the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right in the heart of the uh, rallies that we're having for the gentleman that lost his life up in Minneapolis. And if you believe that, then I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge available to you. We even had uh, protesters in Tucson on Friday, Saturday nights. Uh, they were very, very peaceful uh, and it didn't do anything. In Phoenix, it was a little bit a uh, little bit more crazy. In fact, they broke into the beautiful shopping mall Fashion Square in um, Scottsdale, which was built by uh, hold on one second, by Barry Goldwater. Anyway, we'll see uh, uh, I know it's just really sad what's going on in the world, folks. I don't want to get involved with this. I will tell you this, that this is a, certainly it is uh, you have to stop and think. That, I don't want to go into that crap. I really don't. I, I, they'll get it sorted out. But believe me, this is what you see in the news is not what really is happening. Believe me. I uh, I can't believe I'm just surprised more people didn't lose their lives. I think they lost three or four people over the weekend, which is sad enough. Hey, let's get to the markets a little bit. I had several emails uh, middle of the night last night asking, you know, what the heck's going on and what do I do about it? Well, <laughs> I look at the charts, folks. Honest to God, I, I don't. Uh, I don't believe anything in the news anymore. I haven't for a very long time. And uh, the the main reason for that is when I first started learning this stuff with, uh, you know, going back 60 years ago when I was in college, you know, the guy that really got me started in this was a, he was a technician. He really uh, – and he was a Ph.D. in mathematics and finance and everything. So um, but, but Tucker's asking, when do I sleep? Tucker, I have never slept very much. Even when I was a little boy, my mother said I would play in the crib, you know, and talk to myself, which I still do. Uh, but I just never have sl slept very much. Last night I slept quite well. I slept about six hours, but I've never slept very much. And um, and I, I can get by with it. I really can. Um, when, when I'm driving, I always stay in the right lane and I put it on, uh, you know, cruise control and I take a little nap for 20, 30 minutes while I'm driving. That's always worked out okay for me. But when I was small, I mean, when I started being an altar boy when I was about nine years old in, uh, in Terre Haute, Indiana, I would get up and I would wake up the priest at uh, six o'clock in the morning. What I couldn't understand is why they were staying in the rectory where the nuns were. I never could understand that. But that's what I did. Anyway, I was a altar boy for a while. And then when I got into college, uh, I had to work, uh, of course, and I got a job as a scrub nurse, an ORT, operating room technician. And uh, I worked 11 to 7 shift, 11 at night till 7 in the morning. And then I'd do my classes. And then I would sleep a little bit in the afternoon. And then I would go back to work. And I did that for, for four years. And then I, uh, five years, actually. And then when I got out of graduate school, I went uh, to work for Eli Lilly, and then I had two small children, and I would get up in the middle of the night and take care of them. I just, I just do it. Now that I'm old, <laughs> as I reach that eighth furlong pole, uh, my body tells me that sometimes you have to um, hydrate it, and this is a part of the problem that I have, which is something that I, you know, deal with because I'm old. But hey, folks, I was thinking about this last night. I am probably one of the luckiest people in the whole world for a lot, a lot of different reasons. I mean, just a lot of them. But one of the things, in fact, I'm still able to work. And this is not work for me. I actually, I actually enjoy it. So that's uh, one of the reasons. If I had to work to do this and didn't enjoy it, then I, then I wouldn't do it. I've, I've, I only had one job that I really, uh, I really didn't. Um, that I really that I really didn't enjoy, and that was my last few years of Eli Lilly because I was doing more trading than I was, you know, work for Lilly. But my work with Lilly was so simple. I mean, all I had to do was, you know, give money away, and and so it was really quite easy. But uh, anyway, that that's basically it. Uh, the question that, that I had three emails about one particular thing, and then how do I handle the news? And folks, I really don't care about the news. 
I have been through these so many things, and I've heard so much BS through the years that I just look at the charts, and, and, and that's the one thing that they can do. They can lie to you. They can give you misinformation. They can cheat you. You know, they can arrest you. They can put you in jail. But if they're buying, prices are going up. And if you're selling, prices are going down. That's basically, you know, what should. Okay, David's asking, how long did it take? Um, how long did it take to shake it off? Uh, David, actually, the, there was a couple of turning points uh, in in my life uh, that were that were very very important. And, and one of them was uh, in June of 1976. I had been long uh, soybean complex for several months. For well, starting. In late 95, so it had been about six months I'd been in that position. I've talked about it before, and the position was working incredibly well. It was every day it was up. I mean, it might be slightly down day, but the next day up, 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 up. I mean, it was just, I think it had a stretch there one time that uh, the spread worked 18 days in a row. And uh, as I came into that, um, re the big report that week, uh, uh, on, a, on a Friday, I... Uh, I knew that you know that I had to uh, you know I had to be really careful because I had so I made so much money and the news was so bullish. I mean, this was the most bullish news they had heard since the, since the '72 um, grain robbery thing. And beans had hit ten dollars, and oil was going crazy, meal was going crazy, and I was along a lot of this stuff. And I came in that morning, and uh, I start. Bob Shattuck was my uh, my uh, uh, broker at that time. He had his own firm, uh, and I. Um, Basically, basically, what we did is we started writing sell tickets, and we put our stops uh, at break even because they were called three to four limits up, and uh, put our stops at break even, and then you know wrote them, wrote all the tickets, and there was a lot. I think we had 1,200 contracts and everything, and this was you know this was before you had to have registration and all this stuff. The NFA had just started in, in uh, CFT just started in 1975. The NFA hadn't even started yet, so the the firms basically determined margin and position limits and stuff. So I put all those orders in, and the, and I've told this story before that the squawk box was there, and there were about 50 people there in the office, and it's a, well, boy, they're not going to trade today. You know, they're going to be up three to four limits, and then about a half hour later, well, there's a little bit of selling in the back ends. You know, they might not be up the limit, and then about five minutes before the open, it says, well, they're going to be up, but I don't think they're going to be up that much, and if you hadn't written your ticket by then, it was all over, because they opened about two cents higher in the nearby months. And uh, bada bing, bada boom, that's it. Uh, Z's asking, did I was I playing hook? You know, I had I had quit. I had quit Lily in in seventy uh, early seventy five. I had uh, I had decided to to go into you know full time trading, and it worked out. Anyway, the market went down for like went limit down for three days, but that was the move that bankrupt sparks commodities because he was on the other side of that. He was right that the beans were overpriced but uh he had uh, over over speculated and and that was the reason you know why I did us so when i see these news things that are out here last night in fact i uh, when we were doing the letter this weekend we mentioned you know it doesn't make any difference what these things are folks when you're out there trading today you're trading against algo traders you know some of these uh what do you call these guys from MIT these super brains they're out there too so you've got to be you got to be realize that they're they they have more information than you but if they're just looking at the chart, Charts, you're tied. You got the same information. It's just how you handle it. The quants, you got it, Dollar Bill. The quants. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and the room is chatting a little bit about Eli Lilly and Company and the uh, COVID-19. Uh, Someone mentioned, I heard, that COV means Certificate of Valid of uh, Vaccination. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I know they want to vaccinate everybody, but we'll see down the road what that's going to mean. But uh, when I worked for Lilly, I got transferred back to Lilly from California in 1969. It was right at Thanksgiving, and uh, my uh, had two little babies, and so my wife stayed back ex-wife stayed back in um, uh, Los Angeles while I uh, uh, went out to buy a house in, in Indianapolis and I got there and it was cold and raining my mom came over from Terre Haute to pick me up at the airport and then the real estate guy met us and we looked around and the second house I saw was an absolute beautiful house uh, it was an area of homes remember this is 1969 the homes were in the neighborhood of around $75,000 the highest one was maybe 90000 and we had a house there that was not quite finished and uh, the fellow was in deep trouble financially, and uh, the realtor said, if you could buy this house, he said, this would be a good deal, and so the guy wanted uh, $46,000 for it. And uh, which was way under the market, but he really needed the money. And fortunately, I was bucks up because of that silver stuff that I had done. And so I was with my mom, and she says, "Oh, you can't buy this house." She said, "Look how look at look at all these people here. You know, you just uh, you just, just too expensive." I said, "Mom, I said I can cover it." And so I uh, I made an offer. I guess I paid forty six thousand for it. The problem was my next door neighbor. You, you're not. Gonna, this is a true story. My next door neighbor was my boss's boss's boss. He was an executive director of Eli Lilly. I had no idea the area that I moved into. I mean, uh, we were young. You were just a young family, but there were a few other young families in there. But these were doctors and stuff. So I, I didn't overextend. I mean, I knew what I was. I thought I knew what I was doing. Anyway, it turned out okay. But uh, I just went, uh, just did a little too over my uh, over my pay grade there. Anyway, let's uh, move on to the charts here, folks. Remember, folks, we were looking at natural gas uh, on Friday. If you remember, uh, we were watching it very, very closely. 
actually. And uh, we had a really, uh, really nice move yesterday uh, in natural gas. It moved about eight hundred and fifty dollars. And if you'll see, you'll see it today. We are also we went down and tested that one seventy five level, folks. That level is really important because if we go below that, that's going to break that one three five pattern. And who knows what you could look? You could be looking at natural gas at one fifty three again. So you know, if you're in natural gas and you you know you bought it again down here, put your stop at say one seventy three. Risk about you know three hundred bucks. That's really all you got to do. So uh, you know. <laughs> I got give up. All right, there was a post here in the room. I can't repeat it, but uh, you're absolutely correct, uh, Tucker. Uh, it's it's uh, very interesting. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. Shouldn't have done that, Bubba. Okay, let's take a look at something that's important. We got this from our good friend uh, Bill Meridian last month, and here's what you want to watch, folks. We're in the time frame here. You see June and July, it's two of the worst months for uh, being long gold. So that's one of the reasons we, we, we were long gold coming into this, and we saw the possibility of a big gap up, and we got the big gap up. And what I did was uh, I, I raised the stops to – uh, 1747. I said, if we go below 1747, that means we've locked in a $20 profit in gold and we want to see what happens because the news was so darn bullish for gold with the riots and all the other stuff that was going on that it looked like it was going to be pretty good. But things changed, folks, uh, in the middle of the afternoon on Sunday. And what happened was the early morning when they were talking about the Chinese market and the Hong Kong market, they were called sharply lower and they did not open sharply sharply lower. They opened unchanged and uh, even higher on some, and they went up 3%. And that's what caused those big moves in the stock indices for the United States. Do you know that the Dow Jones had a 700-point swing last night? I mean, 700 points. Are you kidding me? That's a lot of points. So you got to pay attention here. When these algo traders come in, you can't stand in front of them. Look at that. Well, David's, thank you, David. David's posting these. Look at this. Hong Kong was up 700 points, 3.3%. The Nikkei was up uh, 184. Uh, Shanghai was up 2.2%. Uh, so that's, that's why you can't... Uh, they see these numbers just like we do. And so when the market reacts to bearish news, my goodness, you, you, you just can't stay, you can't stay away from that. And, and I've talked about this before. In fact, we should, we should bring this up just for one, one particular uh, reason here, and that would be this one right here. Let's get it up here. Yep, we're going to be able to see this. I want you to take a look at this, folks. This is a chart of Netflix. I, what I want you to do is go back to January. Look at the far left of the chart. The far left of the chart, you see the Dow Jones, and this was when the Dow Jones was a lot lower. The Dow Jones was down 600 points that day, and Netflix was up in a down market. That is very, very bullish. And look what happened. The next day it gapped up, and bada bing, bada boom, it uh, you know went a lot higher. So that's what I talk about when I talk about looking at um, you know reading the market and getting market information. You know what's the market really trying to tell you? And that's what you're looking at when you're watching these charts. The charts is just the sum total of all the buys and sells that are out there. You stop and think of it. That's exactly what it is. And, you know, that's one of the things that you have going for you is that uh, they can't hide from you. You know, if their buying prices are going up, their selling prices are going down. You know, that's the that's the main thing. So, you know, keep in mind that you know, I think that those types of things are relatively important. I haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't checked what the markets are doing uh, so far this morning. David is posting some more quotes by Jesse Livermore. Folks, if you haven't read that book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, that's one of, that's one book that I keep right at my desk and, and, and also at my bedside because I read that thing all the time. There's another book that I keep that is very, very important. It's called The Experts Speak. It's about 450 pages of how the experts speak and how they've been wrong. I mean, they're just incredible, the the speaks, uh, the, the, the things that are in there. One, th two of my favorites 
star. One is from Herb Brooks, who was a coach of the uh, hockey team in 1980. And uh, they asked him when he was getting ready to play the Russians, how's the game going to go? He says, well, we have two chances of beating the Russians, slim and none. And uh, that was one of my favorites. But my very favorite quote of that book comes from Wendell Wick Wilkie. He was a vice presidential candidate in uh, 19 you know, for the 1942 uh, or whatever. I don't know what he was a vice presidential candidate. And he was in Washington at, at, in, at a breakfast meeting at the White House. And a reporter asked him, what are our chances of going to war with Japan? And he said, we will not go to war with Japan in 30 days, 30 years or 30 months. He says, it's not going to happen. And they were bombing Pearl Harbor at that time. So, uh, just remember, when the experts speak, be careful. And believe me, I'm not an expert. So when I speak, you can listen to me because I'm not an expert on anything. So I, I look, I'm like Curly in City Slickers. I look at one thing. I watch those charts, and if I see a place where I can pick up a buck or two, that's what I'm looking at. But I'm always, you know, looking over my shoulder with that guy with the sickle to be prepare yourself. You know, stay away from the bad situations where you have an opinion and you stand in front of it. You don't want to do that. Lose your opinion instead of your money. Lose Lose your opinion instead of your money. Oh, yes, the dimensions of paradise, but John Michelle, I met him a few years ago before he passed away. 877 927 6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm back. I posted a I posted a uh, article from uh, Howard Marks on uncertainty and risk and stuff. I think you might like to to uh, take a look at it. It's pretty good. You can get it online. Just go to Howard Marks uncertainty and you'll be able to pull it up. It's really simple. But he's a really brilliant guy, very conservative, and uh, he's got some really good things about uncertainty. And that's the one thing you got to remember when we're doing these. Uh, shows every day that I have no idea what's going to happen next and frankly I don't re- I don't really care. I worked here for 3 years uh, every day with Mark and that was Saturdays and Sundays too uh, with Mark Douglas and when he lived here in Tucson and frankly I uh, I learned more about the psychology of this stuff during those 3 years than any of the years I did because you know Mark was one of those folks that really didn't look at the news. He basically only traded treasury bonds but he would watch the reports and stuff to see how the market reacted to it, but the news and other stuff really meant nothing to him. You know, just what the charts were were really doing, and you know, and after I saw all these interviews and stuff, and talked to these other guys that were doing, you know, trading and stuff, it was pretty much the same thing. If they react to how what's happening out there, not not what they're trying to tell you in the news. In fact, it's better that you actually don't even you know watch the news. Just look at something else. Now we had a question about Bitcoin. I posted a chart for it, and you can see here that we've been in this really tight consolidation up here now for almost three weeks that's a high level consolidation folks and that is flat out not bearish we just saw that happen in the silver market and i think it's happening again in the uh, market for the uh you know, for the what, what do you call it? The uh, for the Bitcoin and whether it is going to be the same or not, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. But if you'll take a look here, the one in silver, the high level consolidation that we're going to talk about here, uh, we were up quite a bit earlier in silver too. You'll notice that uh, that this level, we were there for seven days, folks, above the 78 percent level between 18 dollars and 14, 1740 an ounce, and then we popped uh, sharply above that, and you can tell that this market really wanted to go higher because of the way that it was acting. And that's, you know, why we were happened to be long the gold. But, you know, the gold doesn't keep going straight up with news like this that is telling us that there are people that are willing to come up there and sell it during that time. And that's why you raise your stop to say, okay, I'll take my profits and then wait back to see if it's going to hold. Can someone tell me whether the... Uh, the, uh, where, where we're trading in this spot, uh, natural gas, I put a little teaser out there at 176, and I just wonder if we were going to stay above 173, because uh, that's interesting to uh, me. It's a very interesting 135 pattern, and I think uh, something we ought to keep in mind as we look at these patterns. These patterns are predictable within limits, and that's really, remember, within limits is the key thing, and they repeat over and over again. Oh, good. So it's holding there, holding there at that level. That's pretty good. Thank you, Marshall. Appreciate it very much. I hope you and Lynn are safe up there. Uh, we had the first, uh, the first, uh, the first negative thing of all this stuff happened yesterday, folks. As you know, we have uh, Sarah has uh, three grandsons in in uh, Philadelphia, and Kelvin is in charge of Parkinson's research at the University of Pennsylvania Medical uh, Facility, where he has about uh, 150 employees that work for him, and uh, they drove by a uh, a riot situation. Situation yesterday within two blocks of uh, where they were going. They were about 20 blocks away from where they lived, but my little nine, about nine-year-old grandson is very, very perceptive, and he could hear uh, the, the tone of voice whispering between his mom and, and uh, his grandmother out here in Tucson, and he wanted to know what's going on, what's wrong, tell me, tell me, what's going on, are we in trouble, are we safe? Here he is, you know, just turned nine years old, and he's very uh, aware of that. So when it starts affecting the children and stuff, you know, this is really good. This will be taken care of very quickly, folks. I, I really believe that this will be done very, very quickly, because uh, when you... Let's forget. Let's go on to the next chart. If you have any questions, 877-927-6648. Now, hopefully our guests this week are going to be Bill Chapman from Trend Reaction, and we're also going to have Arch Crawford from Crawford Perspective should be on, and also we're going to have Tim Boss. Those are the ones that we should have later in the week. We're setting those up for some things, and if we can, we're going to get in Stan Harley here for a little bit because we're having some really big – 
really big things going on. So remember, trade what you see, not what you think, because opinions are like uh, armpits. Everybody has one, and it usually smells, so be careful. All right, let's move on to one of the other charts that we want to pay attention to this morning. Let's give me one second, and that, I think, is where the real – uh, where the real uh, action is happening, folks. Let me get up here to the U.S. dollar because we are down in an area that is uh, very, very important. You'll notice here we have that 61% uh, retracement trading at uh, 98 to 31 on Friday. We made a slightly lower low than we did on Friday, folks, and now we're back above that 61% retracement in the dollar index. So this is where the dollar uh, learns to dance right here because if we close badly today, and that means if the euro gets above that 111 or 117 level, then that will tell you that, uh oh, something's not right and this dollar is going to weaken more and that'll be uh, what's going on. I don't know whether that's uh, the case or not, but we're going to keep a very, very close eye on it. That's uh, the main thing. Just don't get involved with these riots, folks, because uh, they are like, uh, they are. Definitely, when you get into a situation like that, uh, and believe me, they they have they well, boy, st shut the front door and raise the rent and stick to what you know. All right, let's move on to another one that I think is going to be uh, a, a good sale. Hold on one second here. I want to get the crude oil up because I believe we're in an area where we need to pay very very close attention to get short the crude oil. Let me get it up here so we can see it. I haven't uh, put out a sell signal yet. Stop with the news. You got a dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard when it when it lands on the family. That that uh, that's not uh, that's not very good. Okay, let's. You'll see here that we're really close to the fifty percent retracement. Is where we had that gap from way down in March, folks. Uh, that level comes in at around one thirty. Excuse me, around thirty seven dollars a barrel. We're trading around thirty five. Uh, 20 or something so watch it if it gets up there and then turns down that would be a really good spot to take a look at the uh, crude oil it's hard to believe that we've rallied from a minus 37 to a plus 35 uh, gasoline hardly even came down here in tucson our lowest price was a dollar 81 and we're up to a dollar 93 now so it uh, looks like the uh the, the um crisis is over when you look at the price of crude oil. So we'll look at that one thing at a time. Uh, we will be looking at higher meat prices down the road, folks. I don't think there's any question of that. Uh, you'll notice here, I wanted to get get a chart up here on the little piggies here because we've got an interesting shot here. This happens to be June, and you this is the first of June. You want to be looking at August hogs. I've switched this over to August hogs for the next month, but uh, that's something that we want to keep a close uh, a counter. Uh, why because prices are going to go higher, and all you have to do to see that is if you take a look at what's happening with August hogs, you'll see that uh, you know you're you're probably getting ready to uh, have a little pullback here, and then we're going to be going higher. And, and the main reason for that is is the farmers are just uh, the ranchers and stuff. They're they're a they're not making any money, and b even though grain prices are low, they can't expand their herds. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, I'm going to switch uh, gears here for just a second and bring to your attention something that Rich Anderson brought to my attention. Uh, this is the chart here of November soybeans. This is new crop soybeans coming in here. You'll notice that we've been in a really tight trading range from uh, 650, we'll say 860 a bushel, all the way down to 840 a bushel. We're almost at the 78% level now at 844, so it's very important. But what Rich pointed out to me, and I don't really feel follow these things, that there is an ETF for the uh, soybeans. Uh, and I, it really does, it follows tick for tick, but the, let's just as a long-term chart, you'll be able to see it. The symbol on it is S-O-Y-B. Hmm, S-O-Y-B. Uh, okay, but anyway, look, you'll see this tight consolidation in that area. So if you're interested in longer-term positioning in soybeans and you're, you want to keep your buck small, uh, take a look at this because, uh, you know, it's certainly tradable and uh, uh, has pretty good open interest uh, from what uh, Rich has told me. So keep an eye on that. The symbol for that soybeans is S-O-Y-B, and it trades just exactly like, well, within very, very close stuff of, of exactly like the, uh, the soybean contract itself. So that's the main thing of uh, what we're what we're watching there. And I haven't haven't bought any beans yet, but I've certainly got them on my watch list. We had a nice move in soybean oil last month for about a point and a half, but things are very, very quiet in there right now. But they're not going to ring be quiet very long because I have been doing this for a long time. I've never been through a, through a season where we didn't have at least, you know, one uh, one crop report or, you know, crop failure fi uh, risk or something like that. You know, the news says it's very, very hot and, you know, the things will be going crazy. So we'll see. But the December corn is starting to act okay. And the fact is, uh, Marshall, the fact that you're, you're talking about December corn, it's acting really good in the face of, you know, dropping ethanol prices and 30% of that crop now goes to or ethanol. So, and that's why I have a strong interest in uh, some of these things. I don't do ethanol, but I'm certainly watching natural gas because it trades very, very nicely, and it certainly is. Uh, we'll be able to see. Yes, it is. The, 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 there's very low volume on that SOYB, but if you're if you're trading with short bucks, Tucker, uh, that's a, a really good thing because the margin on beans is around 2,500, and of course you can buy that stuff for a whole lot less. I bring that to your attention because uh, Rich thought it was pretty. Uh, Pretty interesting that if you did want to do that, uh, they have some others. COW is the one for cattle, but I, I don't do ETFs. I don't trust these things. Uh, you know, 
uh, uh, Warren Buffett calls them the weapons of mass destruction, and I don't know about that. But all I know is that uh, I just I just don't like trading them. I, I do once in a while. I'll do a TLT or a, a T. Uh, TBT or something like that, but frankly, I just don't get involved with it. Let's talk about the bonds here a little bit, folks, because uh, I did get a, a really good explanation of negative interest rates, uh, and I wanted to bring this to your attention here just to show you where we are with some of these things. Let's get this up here so we can see it. Uh, you'll notice here where we are in the Treasury. This is the a Treasury note contract. Uh, folks, uh, I, I want to show you what a high-level consolidation is. I mean, this is, uh, you're talking since uh, April, uh, I was start, March 23rd, when that was the, the big bottom of the stock market was around the, the 20th to 21st. Since the 23rd of March, we have been in the trading range between 139 and change and 138 and change. You go back and try to find a period where that happens. Now, whatever area we come out of here, uh, it's going to probably very, very ascent, uh, expensive. Now, you notice I, I mentioned here about above 150 lies negative interest rates. And I, I don't understand how that could possibly happen. But I talked to someone extremely smart uh, over the weekend, and he explained to me that negative interest rates is someone that's making a bet that it's against, you know, uh, you know, they're just total collapse is what that's looking at, is negative interest rates. And, and that doesn't make any sense to me either, because if you're going to have total collapse, hell, the government's probably not going to pay either. But I just don't understand, you know, why anybody would pay anything to pay to – you have to pay them to hold your money, okay? And not only that, but they're not giving you any guarantees. I mean, I, and you, if you go into a hedge fund, you sure you got a risk involved, but uh, you're they're not you're not they're not paying you you know to do that. You're supposed to gain something on that. I don't know. Hey, we got a caller from New Jersey. Jeff, are you there? Uh, hi, hi, Larry. Yes, I'm here. How are you? I'm very good. What can I do for you, my friend? Um, I just wanted to see if you could uh, expand a little bit on your choice of uh, December. A trading December coin rather than July when July has a higher open interest. Okay, the reason for that is Jeff, uh, December corn is new crop corn. That's the corn that the farmers have just planted. And when they plant that corn, the first thing they do is they go to the bank and hedge against it so that they they make their uh, thirty cents a bushel, whatever it happens to be. But as the crop is planted there's you know we have a lot of weather uh, things that happen during uh, june july august uh and also even september so you've got that four month period there where something can go really crazy with july corn this is the corn that's already in the bin that's why the open interest is so high they're still trying to you know to get rid of that corn and sell it before the new corn comes in and they have to get rid of it so my feeling is if there's going to be anything really dramatic happen it will happen in december now that's just me picking you know, I have an opinion on that. So you, if you have an, another opinion, that's okay, too. But I'm just I, I looking at December corn because of the fact that uh, I, I like to have the, the, the possibility of uh, something really dramatic happening. It would have to be weather-related. And that's why I'm looking at the December corn. It'll affect the July corn also. But, see, remember the July corn, they've got a lot of corn to sell that they haven't sold from last year's crop. And now, supposedly, the Chinese are not going to be buying very much. You know, they can buy it from uh, South America at a big 10 or 12 percent discount just because of the currency between the Brazilian real. And so what you're looking at is uh, something that you don't have any control over on the nearby, but on that, that December corn, because there's four months of uncertainty. That's what I'm betting on is that uncertainty. I, ho I hope I explained that well, but that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you explained that very well. Thanks. So uh, it sounds like this would be the only uh, time of the year where maybe you would pick a, a month to trade that's you know further out and has less open interest you know, because of what you just explained. So maybe for the rest of the year, you would always be picking to trade the month that has the most open interest. Yes, if I like, if I was day trading, not day trading, if I was trading corn on a, on a smaller uh, swing, you know, it's like maybe a four or five day swing, I would certainly be trading July corn, no question about it, because it'll have more volatility right now, whereas December is just laying in the ground and nothing's happening to it, whereas right now some news could come out in China saying, yes, you know, we're sorry for doing all this and we want to buy as much as we can and that kind of thing, which is not going to happen, but that, 
that's what I'd be doing. I'd trade the one with the most open interest ordinarily, but because corn is in such nice tight trading range down here, you didn't have to risk very much. And so I'm saying I'm going to be a farmer maybe for three or four months, and then that's what I would be. That's what I would be looking at. And the December corn is moving a little bit, which is a good sign too. Okay, terrific. That was a great explanation. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you for calling in, and stay safe, and uh, carry a big stick, I guess, is what they say back in the old <laughs> trades. <laughs> I'd rather carry a big uh, account to trade with, but thank you. <laughs> well, that's okay. It'll be big someday. That's the main thing. Uh, I wanted to mention here about the VIX index. You know, we've got all this stuff going on, and I want you to be able to see. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Oh, just a second here. There we go. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're still trading normally today and everything, which is pretty nice. So keep in mind, we've got Amazon up here pretty good. Uh, I have for my first time in a long time. 
I talked to someone over the weekend that's been a fan of what we do here at TFNN, and he is an option trader, and he really he sells options. So he, you know, just like most professional option trader, he learns how to sell options. But uh, uh, I'm at the point now where I, I I think it's a great idea, but I don't do too much in options, and boy, it is really it is really complicated usually, and so I'm not going to get into that too much. I wanted to mention just a, a thing here in, in in another week or so. Uh, I'm going to be giving a uh, Saturday thing for the money show. We don't do any traveling anymore for that kind of stuff, but they're going to do an online show, and I'm one of the guests. I think I'm 1130 on the uh, 13th of, uh, yeah, 1120 in the e uh, afternoon in uh, early morning, excuse me, in uh, New York time at 1120. Uh, if you just go to the money show, I'm just going to be talking about the uh, state of the markets uh, for about 35 minutes. Uh, there's some pretty smart guy. Dennis Gartman is there. Uh, Dr. Elder is there. Uh, the two Aiden sisters are going to be there. A whole lot of Tom McMillan, but that's just a few. There's a several. I think there's over 100 speakers over those three days, and I'll be one of those. Very short, but frankly, if you listen to this show, you're going <laughs> to. That's pretty much what I what I talk about. So you don't really listen to it. It'll be a little bit of a, uh, a review of what I do every day here at uh, TFNN. So let's remind us that uh, that's what we're watching here. I hope I uh, answered some of your questions today uh, about the news, and I don't want to get involved in talking about what's going on you know with these riots but uh, if you take a step back and think about it a little bit i think you can figure out yourself you know yes bonds are lower they're the maria they're still going lower and they do look bearish why they look bearish you know why should they be you know bullish when they're they're printing more money than they ever have in the history of the world i've posted that chart you know more than uh, once and uh, that's going to be something down the road. Maybe it means maybe it means nothing this time. I don't know. Look, you know, silver and gold are not reacting, you know, as well as you would think. But the Fed is in there pumping. So, you know, you've got to be careful, folks, because the Fed can come out there at any time and do whatever they want. So remember that. We'll see you all tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless.